This is your economics video on trade partners. So if you look at all of the things that you own, I mean, even if you just look at the clothes that you're wearing, take a look at the tags. Where were those products made? Look at the things in your backpack, your computer or a spiral notebook or pencils or pens or your water bottle. And most of them say made in and it tells you which country. Now, we all know that the United States imports a lot of products, so it's not going to be a shocker if most of the things that you own are not made in the United States. But we have a lot of preconceived notions that most of the things we import are from China, and that's not necessarily true. If you look at all of the things that you own and take a look at various tags, you're probably going to see a wide range of companies, um, sorry, countries in which we've imported products from. Now, this could be an American owned company, which has a factory in places like Vietnam um, or in Mexico or in India, or it could be a foreign company which sets up their factories in foreign countries as well. The US just can't possibly make all of the goods and services that we need and want, so we have to depend on trade partners. Now, if we go back to our example, our PPF example, we were looking at the United States and their production of wheat and computers. Now we're gonna add a different country to this. Um, we're gonna look at the country of Japan and we are gonna see if they can be a suitable trade partner for our wheat and computers example. So we're also gonna compare how many wheat and how much computers Japan can make and then we'll be able to compare the PPFs and see if these two countries can benefit from a trade relationship. Just like we did before, we're gonna put wheat on the vertical axis and computers on the horizontal, and we're gonna measure both of these in labor hours used. So just to remind ourselves, if you would go ahead and get out your active learning sheet and find the graph where you made the United States' PPF with wheat and computers. When we're trying to look to see whether the United States and Japan should be trade partners, um, we first have to look to see if the country decided to be self-sufficient, which means they're not going to trade with anybody, how many Wheaton computers would they make on their own? And then we have to see if we trade with them, if we would end up with more than what we would do on our own. If, if in a trade we can only get less than what we could make on our own, then it doesn't make a difference for us trading. There would be no reason for us to trade. A trade by definition only happens if both of the partners in the trade are going to get more goods and services than they could make on their own. Otherwise, they'll just make it themselves. So if you have your United States PPF graph, remember this is the one that has wheat and computers and it has a straight line. Your wheat should be at a maximum of 5,000 and your computer should be at a maximum of 500. Now, I want you to get out a different colored pen, different from the one you use to draw your graph. So if you did your graph in pencil or you did it in a black pen, get out something different, blue or red. And I want you to mark this point. I'm gonna, I just am picking this particular point, but we're gonna assume that you, the United States, if it does not trade with Japan and chooses to make its own wheat and computers, they're gonna use 50% of their labor hours on wheat and 50% on computers. So that means that we will get 2,500 wheat and 250 computers. Um, I have marked that point A on my graph. Um, you do need to, to draw a dot when label it A and then draw these lines over to the axes where you've labeled the amount of wheat and computers that are associated with that particular point. So if we end up deciding to trade with Japan, the US would have to get more than 2,500 wheat and 250 computers in the trade for it to be beneficial for us. All right, for your next active learning, label it active learning number 10, I'm gonna give you the data for Japan and you're going to draw Japan's production possibility frontier. So Japan only has 30,000 labor hours a month available for production. It requires um, 125 hours of labor for the Japanese to make one computer and 25 hours of labor to make a ton of wheat. So go ahead and use those figures in order to figure out how much is the maximum amount of wheat they can use and the maximum amount of computers. Just like we did for the US graph, make sure that you put computers on the horizontal axis and wheat on the vertical axis.